Hi, good morning to one and all. Myself, A. Ramaj Nelu, working as assistant professor in the mechanical engineering department, PBR Wits Kavli. Okay, in previous session, we discussed about introduction to mechanics of materials and uh, classification. Okay, in this class, I am going to discuss, explain about stresses and strains. What is stress? what is strain and different types of stresses and strains okay first of all we have to learn about what is stress stress is nothing but whenever an action force is applied on a body then resting force is induced in the body it means that suppose when a body is subjected to the uh, some external force due to this force what happened the material will go to uh, will subjected to load due to this load what happened it will be get elongated before the elongation it will offer some resistance due to this resistance what happened the the material cannot be deformed after continuously applying increasing the load the resistance force is not sufficient to withstand that applied load in that case the material will be deformed okay this resisting force uh, whatever the resisting force is uh, um, induced the resisting force per unit area is called the stress okay here under the equilibrium conditions the applied force and the resisting force is equal okay so that the it is uh, the stress is also defined as the ratio of the applied force to the cross-sectional area of an object on the material is known as stress okay the force applied on the body is also called load okay here i taken an example uh, that is uh, i taken a bar with length l and cross sectional area capital a it is subjected to a load uh, capital p due to this load what happened the material gets elongated before elongation it will uh, offer some resistance force absorbed in a second diagram in left side uh, we taken as upper load in right side of the section axis uh, we represented some resting force the similar way in third case also left side of the section is uh, represented in a resistance force and right side to the section is applied force it means that and uh, whatever may force we operate on the body and it will offer some resistance to the upright uh, opposite to the uh, applied force direction that means in equilibrium condition uh, the applied load is equal to the resistance force after continuously applying this uh, increasing the load due to this load what happened some uh, the resistance offered by the material will be uh, will be reduced so that the material will start get start deformation next since the stress is defined as the ratio of resisting force or applied force to the cross-sectional area we represented mathematically the stress is denoted by sigma that equals to p by a where, uh, where sigma is equals to stress and p is equals to applied load on the uh, body or resisting force and a equals to cross-sectional area of the body okay next coming to units of stress uh, and during the solving of uh, problems the units it is a very important consideration because uh, in some cases uh, the load is represented in uh, different units in m case it is represented in kg uh, kg kilogram force in a uh, si system it is represented by newton kilo newton mega newton giga newton like the different units are there in the same way for uh, area also uh, the area uh, the units of uh, units for area is depends on the dimensions of the given object therefore suppose the dimensions is taken in uh, in some cases meters millimeters centimeters based on that the units will be uh, formed uh, suppose um, the stress uh, the stress units becomes newton per centimeter or newton per m, uh, m suppose we have to learn the conversions of a given unit suppose 1 newton per meter square is equals to 
10 power minus Newton per centimeter square. How we will get convert this Newton per meter square into is equals to 10 power minus 4 Newton per centimeter square. I will explain. Okay, here 1 meter equals to 100 centimeters. Therefore, uh, in place of uh, meter, we place 10 square. 100 means 10 square centimeter. Therefore, by uh, expanding this equation, 10 square power uh, square is equal to 10 power 4 centimeter square. Okay, we will uh, move from uh, 10 power 4 denominator to numerator. So that we will get 10 power minus 4 Newton per centimeter. Similar way, we have to uh, we will convert meter to the millimeters means 1 meter equals to 10 cube mm. Therefore, by, by squaring the 10 cube, we will get 10 power 6. We move to no, uh, denominator to the numerator, we will get means 10 power minus 6 Newton per m square. We will simply convert uh, Newton per meter square to Newton per centimeter square, Newton per millimeter square. It is a very, very important uh, conversion while during the problems. Next, suppose when the load is in is given in mega Newton per meter square, mega means already we know. 10 power 6 millimeter, 10 power 6. Suppose kilo means 10 cube and giga means 10 power 9. Similar way, uh, suppose 10 power 6 Newton per meter square. Uh, therefore, uh, 10 power minus 4 into 10 power 6 means we will get 10 power square Newton per centimeter square. Similar way, uh, 10 power minus 6 and 10 power 6 will uh, both will cancel the remaining units itself Newton per mm square. Okay, 1 Pascal equals to Newton per meter square. Similarly, uh, Megapascal, Gigapascal, Kilopascal, like that, they will give. Based on that, we have to convert these uh, units. Okay, it is a very, very important consideration while calculating the problems. Next, coming to note here, N is equals to Newton, M means meter, CM is centimeter, and MM is millimeters, PM is Pascal. In pro they will give the notations like that during the problems. Okay, next, coming to Classification of stresses. Up to now, we learn about what is stress and their units. Now, what are the different types of stresses? The stresses mainly divided into different types. That is, first classification. First one is direct stress. Next, indirect stress. Next, combined stress. Again, the direct stress is divided into two types. That is, normal and uh, shear stress. Okay. In a similar way, indirect stresses are divided into two types. That is, normal and shear. Coming to normal stresses again, the normal stress is divided into two types that is tensile and compressive. In similar way, in normal tensile and compressive, in indirect stresses, the normal stress will be developed due to bending, and the shear stress will develop due to the shearing. Next, coming to direct and indirect stresses. First one, the direct stress, the stresses which which are already directly produced due to the Action of direct load on the material is known as direct stress coming to indirect stress. Indirect stresses are one that are caused due to the tensile or compressive act and it leads to other stresses because of deformation of body. Here, direct stress means whenever a body is subjected to the load, that load is perpendicular, uh, uh, that load due to that load, the tensile or compressive stresses induced in the for example tensile uh, tensile stress compressive stress these are the different example for uh, tensile stress okay in the stress uh, for example for bending torsion all these are example for indirect stress next coming to combined stresses in this it is a combination of both direct and indirect stresses most of uh, a structural member is subjected to different types of stresses that act simultaneously such stresses are axial, shear, flexor and torsion. Example, um, um, example in uh, wheels or uh, steering wheel, propeller shaft, in this, there are different uh, combination of loads will be applied on these uh, elements. Okay. Next coming to normal stress in normal stress is uh, that acts perpendicular to the area of a of a body the formula for the normal stress is given by sigma is equals to resting force per area where sigma is nothing but normal stress r equals to resting force a equals to area of a given body next uh, the normal stress may be divided into two types that is 
tensile stress and compressive stress in tensile stress the stress induced in a body when it is subjected to equal and opposite pulls as shown in the figure observed in the uh, figure first diagram it is subjected to to equal and opposite uh, pulls due to this pulls what happened the material which gets elongated due to this along uh, force some internal uh, stresses will be developed due to uh, that stresses is known as uh, tensile stress here the tensile stress is a type of normal stress so it adds 90 degrees to the area of the cross section next the strain which is induced due to this tensile stress is called the tensile stress tensile strain it is equals to the the ratio of increasing in length by uh, original length next coming to compressive stress in a similar way of tensile stress but here uh, the difference between this tensile and compressive stress is here the material is subjected to the to equal and opposite pushes uh, on the object due to this uh, compressive forces the material will gets uh, uh, tends to length uh, decreases due to this uh, due to this applied force some internal resistance will be offered the resistance force per unit area is known as compressive stress the compressive stress is also type of normal stress so it will acts 90 degrees to the applied force uh, sorry 90 degrees to the area of a bar next the strain which induce due to this compressive stress is called the compressive strain it is equals to the, the ratio of decrease in length by original length okay uh, so generally it will get this value in negative manner by converting this uh, by removing this minus in by uh, have to place uh, beside the value in brackets compressive force stress or compressive force okay next coming to for shear stress shear stress induced in a body when it is subjected to two equal and opposite forces but to the tangential to the area because the main difference between normal and shear is in normal the uh, the applied forces act in a um, axial to the uh, um, in the same axis it will operate but in shear the two uh, the applied forces will not lie on the same axis okay due to this what happens some shear force will be developed due to this shear force the material will get shear okay the stress induced in a body it is subjected to to equal and opposite forces that acts tangentially to the area the strain produced due to this shear stress is called the shear strain okay the shear stress is denoted by symbol tau it is a greek letter the day it is defined as the ratio of shear resistance to the shear area is known as shear stress the formula for shear stress is observed whenever uh, i take an example riveted joint here observed the bottom plate uh, and uh, here two plates are connected by the riveted joint here we apply to equal and opposite forces the two forces will act in a, in a different axis due to this different force what happened the material of the rivet the uh, vertical material of the rivet what happened it will be gets tear off absorbed in second diagram due to the applied force what happened the material of the the shank of the rivet will get failure okay due to this shear force the material will gets shear for calculating the shear force we having formula tau is equals to shear resistance by shear area uh, tau represents the shear stress responsible for the change in shape of the body it does not on affect the volume of the body okay next coming to strain up to now we discuss about what is stress and different types of stresses next we will going to discuss about strain when an external force is applied on the body due to this force what happened some internal uh, force will be developed due to this internal uh, force or internal stresses what happened the material will gets elongated or compressed or shortened or deformed due to this changes in dimensions by 
original dimensions is known as strain there is no unit for strain here a strain is denoted by small e or epsilon it is equals to change in dimension by original dimension that is e or capital uh, sorry epsilon is equals to suppose uh, you consider the dimensions in terms of length change in length by original length whenever um, the body is subject to tensile force what happened the change in length will be a uh, elongated therefore the change in dimension will be elongation will be developed uh, suppose in case of compression what happened the length will be shortened the uh, difference to, uh, to the original dimensions is known as strain for example we consider a bar of length l okay do uh, we applied a tensile force on this material what happened uh, due to this tensile force the material gets elongation and the original length is l and due to this force what happened the material gets elongated yeah uh, that elongation is defined as dl okay and the length of the increased amount by amount dl the ratio of change in length to the original length is called strain therefore e is equals to e or e is equal uh, exponent is equals to strain dl or uh, l is equals to change in length next l is equals to original length okay like this we will uh, define the strain in this strain there are different types of strain first one is tensile strain tensile stress is occurred when a material uh, applied subjected to the tensile force due to this tensile force what happened the material gets elongated that a change in dimension to the original dimension is called tensile strain here change in dimension means the length of the bar will get increases though so that the tensile strain is equals to increase in length by original length next coming to second classification of strain that is compressive strain when a material is subjected to two equal and opposite pushes due to this uh, force what happened the material gets shortened the reduced in length here in this compressive strain is denoted by change in dimension by original dimensions here change in dimension what happened the material the length of the bar will gets shortened that decrease in length by original length is known as compressive strain next coming to volumetric strain volumetric strain means suppose whenever a volume of a body is subjected to uh, uh, tensile or compressive forces yeah, whenever we operate compressive or tensile forces due to this tensile forces what happened the material gets elongated due to this uh, that is the, uh, the volume of the body will be increased suppose example i consider uh, balloon whenever we filling the air in the material what happened it will be elongated so uh, expanded due to this expansion the change in dimensions to the original dimensions is known as volumetric strain okay so uh, for uh, at the time during filling air what happened the uh, size of the body is along uh, increase that increasing in volume by original volume is represents the volumetric strain here p is equals to action of force on the material and v is equals to original volume and dv is equals to change in volume next coming to shear strain which is the final one in the final classification of strain suppose consider an element of unit thickness so it is subjected to a shear force as shown in figure the body deforms as shown in figure the a b c d we taken a plane rectangle plane a b c d it is subjected to the shear force due to this shear force what happened here the base is fixed due to here there uh, the base will not change due to this then uh, shear force the material gets deflected uh, the shifted uh, position is represented in dotted manner here the d is shifted to d dash and c is shifted to c dash due to this shear force uh, the material will get deformed we have to calculate the shear strain means change in dimension to the original dimensions therefore here the shear strain is represented in symbol phi therefore and uh, the less dl represents the horizontal on tra or on transverse displacement of the upper face with respect to the lower face 
that means d d dash or c c dash represent the d l and d a represents the original length of the body we have to calculate shear strain is equal to transverse displacement by distance from the lower face here transverse displacement represents the d d dash it is denoted by d l and distance from lower face to the perpend uh, perpendicular height here lower face means a b the perpendicular height is l that is a d represented in l therefore the formula for uh, shear stress calculated the um, in triangle here a d d dash is the un triangle in this triangle we have to calculate the phi uh, shear strain therefore tan phi is equals to opposite side by adjacent side here opposite side represents the d d dash by d a here d d dash represents the d l and d a represents the l therefore finally the tan phi is equals to d l by d n for smaller values we remove tan therefore finally phi is equals to d l by l therefore phi represents the shear strain and d l equals to change in length and l equals to original length uh, generally it is measured in radians okay it is about uh, stresses and strains different types of stresses and strains okay thank you